नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू जॉइनिंग यू टूडे आई एम नुपुर कुल श्रेष्ठ एंड यू आर वॉचिंग आर द स्पेशल सेशन योग शक्ति यू आर वॉचिंग दिस सेशन ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व एंड यू आर ऑल्सो वॉचिंग अस लाइव ऑन आर यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल एंड टूडेज टॉपिक इज योग फॉर इम्प्रूविंग एंड लुब्रिकेट योर जॉइंट्स and to give insight on this topic we have a very special guest with us joining us today our expert and commentator is venkat narayanan secretary sri vittal rukmani samsthan welcome sir and we also have demonstrator with us we have with us komal words alumni md and ifi welcome komal so as we all know joints are really helpful right it is very it's help us in smooth mobility so here sir i want to know how does yoga help in healthy joints so basically in the current modern life ji every one of us are mostly into a sedentary lifestyle yes thoda dur jana hai to bhi humne auto nikal rahe ya to taxi pe ja rahe we are not using our legs to walk and becoming a sedentary lifestyle most of our joints have become so stiff and frozen so this causes day to day issues with you you cannot be sit for hours together comfortably you cannot work comfortably you cannot do any work or the chores nothing can be done comfortably because of your frozen joints so to lubricate this joint every one hour there are few kriyas and exercises that will help to lubricate these joints and keep them healthy in the past if you see the elders in your family the uh, your grandparents they used to take oil bath regularly right so this helps to lubricate the joints and strengthen the bones now we have completely adopted the western culture and we have failed to take oil bath on weekends or we have failed to exercise and give exercise to the body so these are the reason why we are suffering today because of back pain even the youngest in the family is suffering with the back pain he is just 16 years old or 15 years old he is not able to bend he has knee pain he has neck pain he has shoulder pain all this is because of unhealthy lifestyle sedentary lifestyle unhealthy consumption of food so these are the main reasons why uh, these kriyas help you to improve the joints keep them healthy so that you can stay healthy right and before we start our asanas i would like to tell you all that if you have any query viewers you can connect with us through a call we are just a call away you can give a call on this number that is 8800440559 and yes now we will learn all the asanas which can help us to improve our joint health so namaste so beginning before beginning the any any auspicious thing before you start any work in the day you start we will always start it with the prayers let it be your office let it be your school studies let it be your exercise first salutation to the god so in this asana practice in the yoga practice the bestower of good health is surya bhagavan so first our salutations to lord surya bhagavan we will start with the shloka bhano bhaskaramartanda chandarashmi divakara आयुर आरोग्य ऐश्वर्य विद्या देही नमोस्तु ते सो बिफोर कमेंसिंग द आसना प्रैक्टिस वी प्रे टू लॉर्ड सूर्य भगवान एंड देन वी विल स्टार्ट द प्रैक्टिस सो इवन बिफोर गेटिंग इनटू द आसना प्रैक्टिस वी विल फर्स्ट स्टार्ट विद लिटिल वार्म अप्स सो आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज स्टैंड स्टैंड इन समस्थिति ऑलवेज बिफोर स्टार्टिंग एनी आसना और एनी एक्सरसाइज the first base pose will be samasthiti your feet together your palms by the side of your thigh your spine straight your chin slightly tucked in gaze straight so this is samasthiti before starting any asana the first basic position will be samasthiti so whenever i say come to samasthiti this will be your pose from samasthiti we will start doing a little bit movement in the neck region so inhale look up at the ceiling Exhale look down at your feet chin touching your chest repeat this few rounds you can do up to 5 rounds 5 counts you can do 
this is one set inhale looking up exhale look down this is one set repeat it for five times now you will look to your left side of your body leveling the head with the shoulder left side inhale exhale turn to your left inhale turn to your right like this you will repeat it for five times the right and left is one set you will repeat it for five times next we will do rotation of the head with your chin touching the chest 360 degrees your head will touch all parts of the shoulder slowly do it very very slowly so that you don't sprain the neck do it with regular breathing breathe regularly clockwise and anti-clockwise asanas are the only exercises that regulates the breathing in any if you go to the gym or if you do running or if you go for a jogging all this exercises will faster increase the speed of your breath asana alone regulates the breath the longer you breathe the longer you live is the secret so all the asanas you have to do it along with the breathing okay now we will do asanas exercises for the shoulder region inhale raise your shoulders up to the ears exhale lower them slowly inhale exhale slowly like this you will do for five times now you will place your fingers on the shoulder and rotate your hand 360 degree inhale exhale breathing is the regular breathing breathe slowly but regular breathing clockwise anti-clockwise do this for five rounds five counts clockwise and anti-clockwise enough now bring your shoulder straight parallel bring your hands parallel to each other make a fist and rotate your wrist clockwise all these exercises for people who are working in IT field or who are spending lots of time writing or in the keyboard every one hour please take a break and reflect your reflexes do all this shoulder movements neck movements so these are the part where in your mind if you have got stress or depression it will affect immediately on your shoulders or your back that is why we get back pain and shoulder pain you are not able to lift your hands it is because of stress and depression in your mind so to relieve that every one hour even while you are working in your office or in any school or in any um, administration department just take a break for five minutes do all these kriyas and then get back to work this will keep your body healthy do it sideways spread your arms rotate your wrist raise your arms above the head across the ears rotate your wrist all this while the fist will be closed you should not open the fist relax now again bring your hands parallel these are the exercises for the shoulder and the wrist now inhale and move your hands towards side of the body exhale bring them straight again so this exercise it improves and strengthening of the collarbone the humerus and it increases the strengthening of your upper back muscles the muscles that are supporting the shoulder so immediately whenever you have problem in your shoulder you are not supposed to work directly on the shoulder you should not massage your shoulder instead you will do the exercises that strengthen the surrounding muscles so by doing this exercise the humerus the collarbone and the upper back muscles are strengthened and rotate your cuff now rotate the curve imagine drawing a circle with the hand do it slowly clockwise visualize mentally that the cuff the muscles is alone rotating clockwise anti-clockwise 
ओके नाउ वी विल गेट इनटू स्ट्रेंथनिंग द बैक मसल्स इनहेल स्लोली एंड रेज योर आर्म्स अबव द हेड एंड टेक इट एज मच एज पॉसिबल टेक इट बैक कीप योर हेड स्ट्रेट exhale lower your arms inhale take your hand as much as possible towards the back exhale lower your arms this strengthens the upper back muscles all this warm up kriya exercises we will do it immediately once we wake up from the bed and clear our bowels and then we will start with the warm up exercises Now after this we will get into the strengthening of the knee. So bend your knees, place your palms on the knees and rotate them clockwise slowly and anti clockwise. So this is strengthening the knees. People of very young age are getting knee problems, knee pains. So this is very 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 uh, dangerous. We have to be aware of this. We have to make sure that we are exercising regularly every day. now we will get into the asana practices so once we are done with the warm up exercises we will start the asana practices the first asana will be tadasana inhale raise your arms above the head and simultaneously lift your heel exhale lower your heels and lower your palms if you see in this asana it is very important for all sex of people especially for women women children and elders this will regulate your menstrual cycle this will strengthen the uterus it will vitalize the uterus the internal organs and mainly this is the asana that extends your spine upwards it pulls your spine upwards it straightens the spine so this is a very important asana to have it in our daily practice next we will do uttanasana that is the forward bending inhale raise your arms up exhale bend forward so basically this is the classical way of practicing performing this asana not all are capable of bending so much they are not able to touch their knee with their head so it is not compulsory asanas are not about performance or exhibiting your flexibility level asanas are to make sure the purpose is fulfilled so by bending forward what happens the digestive organs are pressed against the thighs and it stimulates the organs to function more effectively so we keeping that in the mind don't worry that you are able to bend only little you are not able to do the classical position which she is demonstrating don't worry about it how much you can bend that is your limit know your limit don't force yourself the very important part in yoga asana is that you don't disturb the breathing inhale raise your arms and come up all the movements of the body is along with the breathing exhale lower your arms so make sure that you do not fasten the breathing or force yourself on any asana next we will do trikona asana widen your legs inhale raise your arms up to the shoulder level left hand touching the right foot exhale inhale come up slowly and twist yourself exhale lower your arms inhale raise your arms exhale bend forward right hand touching the left foot head up inhale come up slowly all these asanas they help to improve the metabolism functioning by twisting bending forward and twisting what we are doing here is we are stimulating the digestive organs we are stimulate stimulating the kidney the liver all these organs are getting vitalized so performing trikona asana is very important in your daily practice next we will do lying down postures supine postures we will start with bhujanga asana lie down on your stomach bhujangasana is very important to strengthen your back and this asana particularly it improves the energy level in the body and also ensures 
the vitality in the body and keeps you very young. Inhale, raise your head, raise your chest while your stomach is still intact on the floor. Only the chest and head should raise up. Stay however long you are able to stay. Don't force yourself. Any asanas you are not supposed to force. Do it with your comfort level. Exhale, lower your head, forehead touching the floor. Relax. So the counter pose for this asana is Navasana. We will do the boat pose. This boat pose asana is very important in improving the digestion. Most of the asanas if you take, 80% of the asanas are for the strengthening of the spine or improvement of the digestion. So these are the key problems that humans face. Strengthening of the spine is very very important and digestion is very very important for good health and young life. So Navasana helps you to improve. Inhale as you lie down. Exhale, bend your head and lift your leg. Yeah. This is Navasana. Stay in this position as long as possible. However you feel comfortable. Relax now. Exhale, relax. Come back to the Shavasana pose. Next we will do Dhanurasana. If you see now most of the asanas that we are practicing, all these asanas are bending your spine backward and frontward. The more you work on your spine, the more young and long you live. This is the secret of asana practices. Now bend your knees, hold your leg, inhale, raise both your head and both your knees while your stomach is pressed on the floor. By pressing your stomach on the floor, the digestion is improved. The key organs such as liver and kidney are massaged or vitalized and they hence function more effectively. Exhale, lower your spine, lower your head. Now we will do Paschimottanasana. Paschimottanasana helps you to improve the digestion again. So now we saw the asanas that are helping to strengthen our spine. Now we are seeing the asanas that are helping the digestion process to happen smoothly, to happen function effectively. So Paschimottanasana, you stand in Danda, you sit in Dandasana. Inhale, raise your arm slowly from the front and exhale, bend forward slowly. Try to grasp your big toe and place your forehead on the knees, forehead touching the knees. Not everyone is again possible to perform this classical way. There is always an alternative method. Know what is your comfort level, go up to that level. It is not compulsory that you put your head on the knees. It is not necessary. Just ensure that you do it along with the breathing. I always emphasize asana practice on along with the breathing. Do not disturb the breathing pattern. Inhale, raise above, slowly come up. Exhale, lower your arms. Relax. Now, we will do Mandukasana. Sit on Vajrasana. Mandukasana is very effective for diabetic patients, for sugar patients, because this particular asana, it stimulates the pancreas and promotes good amount of insulin so that the sugar level is controlled and it monitors the sugar level in the body. So Mandukasana is make a fist, show them how to make a fist. Yeah. Now place the middle finger, join both the knuckles together and place the middle finger on the navel region. Index finger will be above the navel and rest two fingers, the ring finger and the little finger will be below the navel and middle finger will be touching the navel. Inhale in this position. Bring your stomach outside as you inhale. As you exhale, bend forward and exhale completely, suck in your stomach. Place your forehead on the floor and keep breathing in this position. Try to stay in this position as long as you can. Inhale, slowly come up. 
relax. So this is Mandukasana for you. All age group of people are advised to do this Mandukasana. It is very helpful in digestion process. It, it is very helpful for diabetic patients. It is very helpful for removing the constipation problem in the body and allows smooth digestion and smooth elimination of toxins from the body. Next we will do Dvipada Petam. Dvipada Petam is strengthening your back muscles. So lie down on the floor, lie down on your back. Strengthening the back muscles also helps to improve blood circulation in the lower abdominal region. Bend your knees. Don't keep them so close to the body. Place your feet little away from the body and your hands together. Inhale. As you inhale, you will raise both your arms and the hip simultaneously. This is Dvipada Petam. Very helpful for women and men both. This helps to regulate the circulation, increase the circulation of blood in the lower abdominal region. Exhale, lower your arms, lower your hip. Make sure all the asanas are practiced along with the breathing. Devoid of breathing, practicing the asana is not giving life to the asana practice. Next, we have come to the conclusion. After every practice of asanas, we have to perform the reflexes, reflexing the muscles so that it calms down the muscles. Sit in Vajrasana. As you sit in Vajrasana, Vajrasana activates the Vajranadi. It improves the digestion. It is very helpful in stimulating the lower abdominal organs. So sitting in Vajrasana, inhale, raise on your knees and raise your arms together simultaneously. Exhale, bend forward. Perform Balasana. Place the head on the floor. This is the pose where your mind be very calm and composed. Whenever you are having stress, whenever you are having any uh, stiffness in the mind or the body, immediately perform this asana five times. You will feel immediately very calm. That is why it is Balasana. You will feel just like a baby. It doesn't have any worries. It is not bothered about happiness or sadness. It treats all the same. So Balasana is very effective in calming the mind and keeping it in a beautiful state. Come to the lion pose as you inhale. Look straight. Exhale back to Balasana. Inhale, raise on your knees. Raise your arms up. Raise your arms up, keep your spine straight and then back to Vajrasana. Sit on Vajrasana and relax. So in the end of every asana practice, we will finish it with this uh, four, three steps of exercises to reflex the muscles. Next we will do Surya Namaskaram. Surya Namaskaram is salutations in front of the sun, not to be done in the rooms, but today given circumstance we are performing it in the rooms, but make sure the room is well ventilated, keep the doors open, make sure the room is very clean and tidy, don't do it in a very congested space. Performing Surya Namaskaram in front of the sun, what it does is, it bestows good health in the body, it calms your mind, it, and it energizes the nervous system. It stimulates the organs. It is a signal to the body that morning has come. Now it is time for the body to work. So it will give the energy. Along with the energy, it will send message for the internal organs to function more effectively. One who does Surya Namaskar. We, have, we all have seen our Prime Minister at the age of 70 plus how energetic he is. He is traveling length and breadth of India. He is going worldwide. He is not even affected by his sleeping pattern or foot pattern. How is this possible? All the credit goes to Surya Namaskaram. The way he practices Surya Namaskaram every day, that is the reason for his strengthening and his energy. So we can learn from this and if one practices Surya Namaskaram, he will be free from all sort of ailments, all sort of diseases 
and his concentration level for children especially those who have got into their board exams or those who are into uh, uh, any serious examinations please practice surya namaskaram every day this will increase the memory power this will increase the flow the circulation of blood to all parts of the body your mind will be calm you will be always aware of what is happening around you so all these are very very important in your day to day life in this most challenging period of life so practice surya namaskaram every day it calms your mind it gives more power to the brain it always improves the concentration level it keeps you aware 24 by 7 if you go and ask to aware 5 minutes before someone would have spoken something to you and you would immediately say that i forgot i don't know i have to recollect what did he say all this is because of lack of awareness you are not self aware of yourself so by practicing surya namaskaram you know what is happening around you that is very very important in today's life it is the most challenging part of your life the world is in a very huge competition so make sure you are very sufficient and efficient towards what you are doing and being the youth of india being the youth of india it is in your hand to have a beautiful health so practice on surya namaskaram is very 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 important so inhale raise your arms exhale bend forward inhale take your left leg back exhale perform adho mukhasana both the legs inhale perform bhujangasana exhale now again in the reverse adho mukhasana inhale bring your left leg back front exhale both your legs front head touching the knee inhale raise your arms above the head you see how simple is this practice but see the amount of benefits you are getting just by practicing it every day for 15 minutes in front of the sun you will be the most powerful person in this world one who performs surya namaskaram every day this energizes the entire body you will not have that sluggishness you will not feel tired even if you are fasting you will not feel tired because this provides sufficient amount of energy for you to work throughout the day surya namaskaram is very very important now we will get into the final part so what is asana basically asana promotes pranayama it helps the body to perform pranayama so asana practices removes the toxins in the body removes the blockages in the body and allows the prana shakti to travel throughout the body so before getting into the pranayama pranayama is like a 12th standard exam so to before performing the 12th standard you should it is important you have crossed all the 10th 11th and then you get into the 10th exam same it is in the asana everyone thinks yoga means just performing asanas yoga is not just about performing asanas asanas is a preparation for pranayama pranayama is a is a preparation for meditation so through asana practice you remove the blockages in the body and allow the prana shakti to travel throughout the body preparing the body to perform more more time you have to sit on the floor and perform pranayama for that you require a good posture that is what is asana helps you to perform pranayama efficiently so now we will start with the pranayama the first phase of pranayama is purification of the body that we will do through kapala bhati <clears throat> in the kapala bhati you have to make sure that first you sit straight in any practice of pranayama we are sitting straight first sit straight make sure the spine is straight because the energy has to travel through the spine by keeping your spine hunched what happens is it is just like a tube with water if the tube or the pipe is twisted the water flow will be very less if it's straight the water level will be forceful so same here if your spine is bent forward or if it's sideways what happens is the energy channel is not passed through the spine completely so make sure your spine is straight your head is straight your shoulders are opened well your chest is widened and the torso is placed well balanced on the floor so sitting in this position you will inhale deeply 
exhale deeply for few rounds allowing the body to understand that we are going to pra- practice pranayama suddenly if you start pranayama the body will become confused so you have to slowly understand the body and allow it to prepare to prana- perform the pranayama so for that you sit straight and close your eyes inhale and exhale observe the breathing how the breathing is happening how you are inhaling and exhaling now slowly you will inhale fill your stomach expand your stomach and forcefully exhale and suck your stomach inside forcefully inhale exhale inhale bring your stomach outside exhale suck your stomach inside forcefully repeat this for 20 rounds slowly increase the speed start it slowly then slowly keep increasing the speed as you near 20 the speed should be more this will help to purify the body what is purification of body there are multiple amounts of toxins in the body because of our irregular sleeping pattern because of our unhealthy food because of our uh, sedentary lifestyle more toxins are accumulated in this body so to eliminate those toxins from the body this purification of body the annamaya kosha is very important that happens through the kapala bhati pranayama so 20 rounds of kapala bhati pranayama 20 counts one set is 20 counts like this you can perform up to 3 sets so it comes totally 60 counts take a break after performing 20 counts take a deep inhalation hold the breath in your chest in your lungs and slowly exhale the amount of duration is up to your level don't force yourself to hold for more time or don't uh, be in a hurry to exhale the breath know your comfort level and hold the breath in the chest as long as possible next we are getting into the nadi shodhana what is nadi nadi is the energy channels what happens in the nadi shodhana we are purifying the nadi channels that are the energy channels purification of energy channels in the pranamaya kosha so nadi shodhana helps to remove the blockages in the nadis and allow the power the energy the shakti to travel throughout the body to all parts of the regions of the body so in pranayama in the nadi shodhana pranayama inhale through the left nostril using the mrigi mudra inhale through the left nostril hold the breath in your navel region that is the seat of energy channel the prana hold the breath in your navel as long as possible exhale through the right nostril again inhale through the right nostril hold the breath in the stomach region and exhale through the left nostril this is nadi shodhana pranayama this is one set inhaling through the left holding the breath in your stomach exhaling through the right inhaling through the right holding the breath in your navel exhaling through the left so this is one set like this you can perform up to five sets three sets next is the expansion of the prana expansion of the prana the energy that you have stored within yourself now we are expanding spreading it throughout the body so how it is done is we are by bhastrika pranayama bhastrika pranayama make a fist keep the fist in your chest level both the hands both the hands at the chest level inhale raise your arms above the head forcefully exhale drag the hands down forcefully pull it forcefully up pull it forcefully down inhale up exhale down inhale up exhale down do it forcefully so that the energy level is spread throughout the body kapala bhati is purification and spreading the energy throughout the body so kapala bhati is very very important these three pranayamas that i have taught you today the uh, kapala bhati 
the nadi shodhana and in the last what she performed is bhastrika so all these are to energize and bring shakti bring life to the body without the prana this body is not respected it has got no name imagine the same body is being burnt in the graveyard why until then people were happy calling you by name respecting you everything was there the moment the life from the body is gone the people are burning this body so from this what do we understand life or value respect is not for the body it is for the prana shakti that is in the body the moment prana leaves the body this body is no more respected it is called as dead body people until then were calling you by name once the prana leaves the body people call you dead body so the value is for the prana shakti not the body so the more you engage yourself in pranayama practice you will be self aware you will know the real purpose of life it will allow the mind to calm down it will energize the channels it will purify and balance the doshas in the body vata pitta kapha the three doshas are balanced in the body the vital organs in the body are stimulated the blood circulation is increased the oxygen level in the blood is increased so these are very important practice in your day to day life hardly it will take you 30 minutes if you don't use your body you will lose lose the body is the saying as the saying goes we all must make sure how we don't skip our food how we don't skip our sleep how we don't skip our uh, playing games or going for a movies likewise exercising is very important you cannot skip you can earn lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of money but if you don't have good health you are going to lose it if you don't have good health you are not going to enjoy the money you are not going to spend the money in what you want imagine you want to have so many sweets you like eating chocolates but if you don't have a good health and your diabetes is high your sugar is high how can you take sweets so health is very very important for you to enjoy the life money can come any time in the life health is only once once it is deteriorated you cannot put it back in a good shape so make sure we practice all these exercises these asanas and this pranayamas next we will come to the end the last pranayama that we will be doing is pranayama for memory this pranayama for memory is very very important for the children make your mouth like a beak make a mouth like a beak and breathe in through the mouth hold the breath within yourself as long as you can and as making the beak again your mouth like a beak exhale the prana outside do this for seven times what happens here is the brain is suspended of oxygen supply what we are doing here is we are holding the breath within ourselves we are suspending the oxygen to the brain by inhaling through the mouth and holding the breath in our stomach exhaling through the mouth suddenly the brain sends a signal to the body asking it to send oxygen so at this time when you supply the oxygen it absorbs more amount of oxygen and the brain is now happy and it functions more effectively this is very very important exercise for children especially as their board exams are nearing this exercise will strengthen the brain muscles the cells in the brain cells are improved and becomes energetic after performing five rounds of breathing inhalation through mouth and exhalation through mouth now you will inhale anulom and vilom you will inhale through the left nostril exhale through the right nostril inhale again through the right nostril exhale through the left nostril this we will practice for 3 times first five times we will practice inhalation through the mouth exhalation holding the breath in your navel then exhalation through the mouth five rounds of practicing this and next three rounds you will practice anulom and vilom inhalation through the left exhalation through the right again inhalation through the right exhalation through the left what we are doing here is we are suspend suspending the oxygen supply to the brain hence the brain is sending the signal to the body it wants oxygen the carbon dioxide level increases in the body when you suspend the oxygen 
so it wants no more oxygen when it is asking for oxygen that is when you supply oxygen by doing anulom and vilom by supplying energy prana and oxygen when the brain asks the brain starts to function more effectively and happily and your memory power increases multiple times so this is for the day these are the asanas and pranayamas for you to practice every day it is very healthy for good health and for good memory and for long longevity in your life surely so if you want to keep your joints in good condition then definitely practice your kriyas yoga asana and pranayam apart from this vankat narayan ji i would like to know how how can the uh, yoga can keep oneself uh, uh, you know in a good and uh, better condition with the help of yoga in daily life so basically uh, the biggest problem today is yoga has become a business people are not learning yoga in a traditional manner they just think yoga is about exhibiting your skills of flexibility by moving your body hither and thither that is not yoga alone yoga has got eight limbs to it ashtanga yoga it starts with yama character building niyama then asana then pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana like this you go step by step so all this is a process and main purpose of yoga asanas is to strengthen your back the more the back is flexible the more the back is strong the more young you will look the more long you will live the reason is spine is the merudhanda it is the center of axis all the activities of the body is supported by the spine so strengthening and keeping your spine straight don't hunch never hunch your spine keep them always straight without any interruption the nervous system is completely passed through the spine so keeping the spine strengthened helps you to live long and look young so this is one of the aspect of asana and mainly removing eliminating toxins from the body is the foremost important part of asana practice doing it along with the breathing it allows you it supplies more energy to the body you won't become tired by practicing asanas even for hours together it is because you are doing it along with the breathing that is the key in asana practice so practicing asana along with the key is very very practicing asana along with the prana breathing is very very important so these are the few facts that i would love to share in more coming time i will like to share more important facts on yoga asana practice how important it is thank you so much for this uh, information thank you so much venkat narayan ji for joining us today thank you komal so yoga is a practice that connects body mind and soul so if you want to keep yourself in harmony be sure to practice yoga with this note i am nupur kulchreesh signing off take care namaskar